I can go in the time. <laughs> um, so I'm a composer, a performer, and an instrument builder, and I'm going to talk tonight about making music about the polar regions. So um, music that is about the environments and ecosystems there and is made out of field recordings and natural object in instruments from those locations. So in uh, the austral summer of 2008-2009, I went to Antarctica through the National Science Foundation's Antarctic Artists and Writers program. And I was able to spend five weeks at Palmer Station recording audio and gathering materials for instruments with the ultimate goal of making a set of music compositions that could be performed live and will also be recorded. That's what Palmer Station looks like. It's, it's a very small station. It's the smallest permanent U.S. research station in Antarctica with a summer population of around 30 to 35 people. It's just, that's it. A handful of buildings on the edge of a, a, a island covered by glacier. And then in 2011, I went to the north. I went to Svalbard up in the Arctic, and that's north of mainland Norway. It's an archipelago. And um, you can actually fly to the capital of Svalbard. It's much more accessible than Antarctica. And I was there for about a month doing a residency with a visual artist named Linda Stern from Brooklyn. And we were part of the Arctic Circle Residency Program, which takes about 20 to 30 artists every year to explore that region of the Arctic. So, so what did I do in these places? I, I went out and I tried to experience the place and learn as much as I could about being there, what the ecosystems were like, what people were studying in the scientific fields, and I spent a lot of time on boats. So this is our, our uh, Zodiac boat, the Art Boat 66, in Antarctica. And we were taught how to drive these boats, what to do if you fall overboard, um, how to switch the motors in an emergency. And we had some autonomy to go out and explore the area around the station. It's really fun to drive your own boat in Antarctica. But sometimes your smile might freeze on. <laughs> it's, really, it's pretty cold. Um, in the Arctic, I was based on a Barkentine schooner uh, named the Antigua, ironically. Uh, and it was just beautiful sailing around. And I felt like I was on an art pirate ship in the Arctic. And there's another shot of the ship. So I did a lot of field recording in these places. I'm, I'm really interested in the natural sounds. This is the equipment that I brought with me to both, both locales. Um, some condenser microphones, uh, field recorder, little pocket recorder for things you just have to get on the fly. Very important, uh, big fluffy windscreen. A lot of wind in the polar regions. Um, so the film people call the windscreen a dead cat. But we called it uh, Yeti for the Arctic. Um, and I also brought hydrophones. So the little silver things on the cables there are underwater microphones. You can put them in the water. You can bury them in mud. You can put them in the ice. Things that you wouldn't do with a normal microphone to be able to hear sounds you wouldn't be able to access otherwise. So a few examples of things I recorded. Um, these are penguins in Antarctica. These are adult penguins. And I'm going to play a little sample. <laughs> stuff is. It's the penguin poop. It's got a very distinctive smell. Um, another thing that I, animal I really enjoyed recording were the southern elephant seals. 
So these guys are huge. They're um, a separate species from the northern elephant seals that we have down by Santa Cruz. And you could get quite close to them and listen to them snoring and breathing on the land. And I also got them playing in the water one evening. So this is what the elephant seals sound like. So those were all juvenile males, and um, what they do is they have these mock fights where they practice battling for the ladies. And then they make some of those loud vocalizations when they do that. Um, there are some hazards in the polar region. Some of them you might not have thought of. Um, one is being dive-bombed and pecked on the head by birds. They have this helpful sign up in, in Svalbard about what would happen if you get too close to the tern nests. Um, and there are terns actually that migrate from pole to pole. So you can see the Arctic terns in either pole, and they can dive bomb your head in either location. Um, so this is a, a skua, which is the predatory bird in Antarctica. They like to eat the penguin chicks. Uh, and they also don't like it if you get too close to their territory. And I have a recording of um, accidentally getting too close to a nest. <laughs> this is their general, like, hey, we're hanging out sound. <laughs> she'd actually been hit in the head by one and it pretty much knocked her over. But she was uninjured. Um, so there's a lot, some animals that can, can harm you in the Arctic, in the Antarctic, both of them. Uh, this is a leopard seal. I have no recordings of leopard seals. Um, they did like to follow the boats around. But we knew that they could jump into the boats because previous zodiacs had been chewed and gotten holes in them from the leopard seals, so we tried not to hang out too close to them. Uh, there's also the Antarctic fur seals. They're pretty cute, but they can run faster than a human on land, and they'll, they'll bite you if they feel threatened. So here's a, here's a recording of one where I was just a little too close, and he was a little upset with me, but he didn't attack me, and then I quickly backed off. It's a surprising sound. I think he was like, look, I'm trying to take a nap. Can you just <laughs> back off? Um, of course, in the Arctic, you do have to worry about polar bears. Um, in Svalbard, there's a human population of about 3,000 people and a polar bear population of about 3,000 bears. So you literally cannot leave town without a rifle and the knowledge of how to defend yourself or an armed guard. So it's a very different scenario than Antarctica where on land, as long as you didn't fall into the glacier or get hypothermia, you're not going to at least be eaten by something. Um, so these were our, that was our guard in, the, in Svalbard. Um, there's also rabies up there, and I didn't know this, but the, um, the reindeer can get rabies as well. The, ra the foxes had rabies when we were there, and we were told to stay away from them. So I have no recordings of foxes, but they're so cute. Um, and, and the reindeer get rabies too. And this is a Svalbard reindeer. So I made a lot of recordings of ice, obviously. 
Um, this is me trying to record the glacier calving. I'm basically staking it out, waiting for something to happen, because there's no way to predict when the ice will fall off that face into the ocean. This is what it looks like after it's calved. And here's me out on the zodiac trying to capture the sound of the little floating ice pieces in the air, and also um, icebergs. A lot of the glacier ice has uh, air pockets frozen in it, and as the ice melts, the air is released explosively, and you get lots of popping sounds like Rice Krispies. Uh, let's see, and I would throw the hydrophones off the side of the ship into the water to record the sound underwater, and so here is some underwater floating ice. in a frozen pond, or the, sorry, the uh, hydrophones in a frozen pond, and there was no sound here because it was cold and the ice wasn't melting. But as my weight shifted around the ice, I got these really cool um, radio sort of sounds. on the glacier and go down inside a crevasse. And so here are some sounds from playing icicles inside a crevasse. The problem with the icicles, they're beautiful, but once they start to resonate and give you a nice pitch, they tend to fracture and then they fall to the bottom of the crevasse. And this is a picture of what it looks like looking across. So there are just thousands of icicles in there. Up in, uh, in Svalbard, I played the cold carts. They make these great gong sounds. And I went to a ghost town uh, called Pyramiden. It was a, a Russian coal mining town, and the Russians were told that they needed to leave in 48 hours, and the ship was coming, and they just left everything there. Took their families and went away. Um, so you can wander around this town, and I tried doing a performance on these railings of the steps. Just a little improvisation. that's about 10 minutes long. And here's, here's the, the main square. Um, so things I brought back to make sounds with in California. Uh, I brought rocks and some shells from the Arctic. I brought penguin nesting stones from Antarctica, and I have some here. You can come check them out later. They're very resonant. I brought limpet shells, because they have different pitches and I knew I could do something musical with them. Those are Antarctic limpet shells and penguin bones to build instruments with. So then I started experimenting to see what kinds of sounds I could get out of these things. And I built instruments using the bone, penguin bones and the limpet shells. Here's a few of the instruments. So these are Antarctic limpet shells mounted in, in uh, driftwood. Penguin leg bones in driftwood. Penguin breast bone. More penguin bones. Penguin vertebrae. They sound like little tiny pieces of ice. More penguin vertebrae mount mounted in kelp. So then I started making compositions that combined the interesting field recordings with the sounds I could produce with these instruments. And I made scores so that I could rehearse the pieces and perform them live with other musicians. 
So here are the three players, and as you go across, you see time, and then description of the instrument and kind of what playing techniques to use and how to interact with the other players. Sometimes the scores are much more graphic, and I get to make up little symbols for different sounds in the field recording and sounds that are played live. Here's another example. And here's what a setup for a stage might look like. This was for a show I did in Sacramento last week. So this is a solo show. I'm going to play all those instruments in my set. Here's a performance at the lab in San Francisco with three people playing the, um, the Antarctic pieces. And now I'm going to play a little bit of a piece from the Arctic work. This is a video, a video by Uno Stern, and field recordings from our ship up in the Arctic. And along with that, I'm going to play some kelp flute as soon as I get my score up. and people wanting 
to drill for natural resources up there, and the effects on the ecosystem. And I have nine seconds left. So my next project I'm working on right now is an installation in La Jolla. There's some information there. Wow, you didn't waste a single second. How do I stop this thing? Okay, any questions while I try to stop this thing? No questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, give them time. So, um, your talk didn't mention anything about the, the instruments of the major